Um, so to start us off, something that I find very interesting is um, in addition to directing this film, you also wrote the screenplay. What is that process like creatively? Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> so funny. Uh, go for it, Will. Go for it. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard with the lag. We mastered answering questions together in person, but then if you get on Zoom, it's a whole new level of talent. Sorry about um, that. So, I mean, I think we personally really liked writing the screenplay in addition to directing the movie because um, it allows you, it's kind of your first pass of preparation as a director uh, in addition to your chance to, to nail down the story beats. So, for instance, if you're on set and an actor has like questions, even really detailed questions about a character or, or like motivation, you can easily answer that because you you we've been through it a million times while hammering out the script. And uh, one um, kind of unique thing uh, about the process here was that um, Seven and Niche wrote uh, the treatment that this script was based on. So a lot of our job was to kind of do a final edit to the story, I guess, in some ways, but also um, you know, kind of breathe life as much as we could into uh, into the characters and 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 bring some emotion to it into into what was already a pretty pretty great um, a story that Seven and Nish had written. I love it. Now, this film is obviously a bit of a continuation or a similar concept, not necessarily a sequel, but to Searching. What do you hope that viewers who liked Searching and enjoyed it kind of take away from this? And what is it like to continue such a one of a kind concept? It was very intimidating to try to continue that movie because when we worked on searching as uh, editors, Nick and I were editors on that movie, um, our kind of goal was to do this extremely narrow, extremely niche uh, genre of movies told on computer screens, uh, just to do everything possible <laughs> within the genre. So we did our best to, to, to make that happen. And then, you know, suddenly there's interest in a sequel and it's like, okay, guys, do it again. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I hope that, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I think I think um, anytime you're doing a sequel, you know that like there's you know there there was a fan base uh, there for the first one, so we wanted to um, honor you know the first one and and didn't we didn't want to let people down, but also we knew that we were going to expand uh, and, and hopefully people that didn't didn't see searching were going to see this. So we also always wanted to make sure the movie stood on its own and was a really fun experience for everyone. So. Um, one thing that I think we're really proud of is that this movie isn't just a movie for young people. You know, it isn't just a, a movie for for um, for people who use their phones all the time. I think there's like a universal story about um, a family member losing and and and, and missing um, their their loved one, and and so hopefully everyone walks away from it not just um, having been really entertained, but also um experiencing that that more universal story about you know coming to appreciate your your family member absolutely now filming something like this as you mentioned being filmed entirely through computer screens and other forms of media has to be like one of the most unique filming processes i could imagine can you walk me a bit through what that process was like for you guys and for the actors i mean yeah, one so of the craziest yeah, <laughs> keep doing it. Um, I think I, I think one of the um, one of the uh, difficult parts, or one of one of the most unique parts about this filming process, is we actually edited this movie, um, you know, twenty five some weeks before we shot it. Um, so uh, everything that you see on screen is not screen recorded. Um, everything is animated very very slowly and meticulously by our editors Ariel and Austin, and. Um, and so in order to know what we're shooting and where the camera uh, is going to be and and where the actors eyelines are going to be, we actually had to edit it uh, beforehand. And, and uh, then when we got to set, we had this sort of roadmap, uh, which could show us where we needed to uh, place the, the, the computer and also where we could, um, you know, how we could we could tell the actors where they were looking uh, at what point. So that was probably the most unique, unique aspect to this filming process there was lots of like unusual sort of camera rigs and stuff on top of that but for the actors specifically it was probably the hardest because uh, a lot of times they have to perform in the scene without anybody actually in the room with them um so I, I, they would do creative things like volunteer each other's time so that they could both kind of perform uh with each other at least in like a facetime window while they were recording a scene so you could get a feeling for their chemistry um 
little things like that where people were really generous with their time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, most of the actors in this movie spent most of their time acting alone, just in front of a screen like we are now. You guys might possibly be the only filmmakers ever to say, yeah, we edited the movie before we shot it, which is <laughs> crazy. Um, what, like, why was that, um, why was that the best way to go? And what challenge, like, did you face challenges with that? That's so interesting. Yeah, you Nick. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, uh, if you're, I, I think from just a practical perspective, we needed to know where June would, would be looking at any given time. Um, we needed to know the beats. Uh, it, it, unlike a normal movie, you know, like in a normal movie, you might be in a scene and you might say, okay, and then at this point, you're going to cross the room, you're going to stand here, you put a mark on the floor, then maybe you go over here um, and you're, you know, you're, you're blocking the scene physically. Um, with this, you have to block the scene almost with eye lines and um, movements and when she touches the trackpad. And so from a very practical perspective, we just needed that. But also, I, I think that um, this is something we had done on searching and it, uh, um, it it was also acted as like a final rewrite of the movie. Um, when you have something kind of as abstract, we had done searching before, but when you have something that is kind of newer, um, and, and, uh, you know, on the page, it, it's like a bunch of text. It's a little bit harder, I think, for people to visualize, um, something like this, uh, just on the page. And so it also kind of worked as a, uh, as, as a piece that we could show our crew, um, so that they knew what they were shooting as well. So it was really instrumental on that front. That sounds so cool. I love that so much. Um, now, Nick, you mentioned this um, a couple of questions ago. This is obviously a thriller, but there's also a lot of raw emotion in it. And as filmmakers and as the individuals who wrote this whole screenplay, how do you go about combining emotion within thrillers? A lot of credit uh, goes out to Seven and Each for the treatment they gave us, having the opportunities for all those moments. Um, but I mean, our goal in making this movie, I think our favorite core genre is thrillers, but our goal was to to do the, you know, a movie that takes you on uh, through every emotion, you know, you should laugh, you should cry, you should be terrified for your life. Um, so, and, and, you know, that should work on all people, you know, almost all ages. And uh, I guess, yeah, that was, that was just always our, our goal. I don't know if there's a specific sort of strategy we used for implementing that, except for just anything that elicited an emotion for us. We said, how can we get that in the movie? <laughs> I was going to say, I think like anytime um, we're working on anything, like you want to tap into something that feels true and real. And so we um, tried our best, especially early in the writing process, because as you work on a movie, you start to feel the emotions less um, and you're just kind of focused on tone and pacing. Um, and in theory, you're trying to remember that emotion you felt. But I think early on in the writing and then uh, especially when we were working with the actors, it was just about trying to tap into something that felt real um, and true. Um, and, and emotional um, because I think that's that's the audience's um, access to the character. So it's really important we never lost sight of that. Absolutely. And I think you see that very clearly in both of these films. Now, um, this film and Searching, they both deal with themes of technology, social media, and obviously lack of privacy in our day-to-day -day lives. What messages or commentary do you hope that the audiences take away from that? <laughs> Go for it, Will. Yeah, we... Um, um... Uh, we we like to use technology in this movie as a sort of a canvas more than as a, an actor for good or evil, I guess. Um, so it's not helping or hurting. It's just, uh, you know, amplifying um, all the things that we already have inside of us. So, you know, obviously the main character is using um, technology the whole time to help find her mom and makes huge progress through it that would just be impossible otherwise. There's no other world where a, a missing person movies lead detective would be 18 years old without <laughs> this technology <laughs> but um but in addition to that also most of the negative events that happen in the film unfold because of technology we think of it as a setting almost more than as a as a uh, force for good or evil yeah and i i think um i think like we we knew that this was a piece of entertainment that we wanted it to be emotional. We didn't want it to be this sort of didactic, like have this grand thesis on anything. Uh, we knew that that would kind of ring false uh, tonally. But um, 
at the same time, I think there were things that we were interested in. We were interested in what was happening in true crime with like all of these um, real life cases on TikTok. We were interested in the fact that our phones are always tracking us on Google. And so, like Will said, it wasn't like we were trying to make any grand statement, but it was like it was an interesting arena um, to play in, I think, those 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 things. And so we uh, were conscious of that and we were kind of just thinking like, okay, what would be a cool plot point or, or how could we incorporate this into the script? Because these are these are all interesting and complicated things. Like you said, with the TikTok true crime and that all that stuff, I think that's like a, something so many people really love and enjoy, which is so interesting and you have so much access to it. Was there um, any other things or forms of social media or other mediums that you drew inspiration from when creating this digital world? Hmm. Gone Girl. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, any any other like like I mean uh, we we drew a lot we listened to a lot of podcasts um, around the time we were writing um, we listened to you know like um, I think we in terms of like inspiration we probably one interesting thing I think about searching and missing that I like is that um, we it's it's kind of a traditional movie just translated to the screen so we're constantly drawing on like other movies and other tropes, and then just saying, what's the screen version of that, right? So you see that it, as an example, is that there's like a Hitchcock uh, counter zoom uh, uh, halfway through the movie about, um, and that that was just us like kind of saying, oh, what would that look like on a screen? So we're constantly drawing on inspiration from that, both formally and also um, just narratively and, and trying to embed that into the screen uh, to kind of synthesize something that 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 uh, is new. We actually talked a lot about Vertigo while we were writing this movie, and there's even a couple of little uh, references that people um, might catch. But the plot line of Vertigo actually has some strange similarities to this if you just compare the plots side by side. Gonna have to watch them both now. That's so funny. <laughs> You guys have such a great cast in this film. Stormy is amazing. Um, what was the best part about working with them? Storm had an incredible um, job to do, and she did it. I think uh, just everything from from those uh, scenes toward the end, where she has to just show almost a hundred percent emotion authentically for like 15 minutes straight, which she nails to like a lot of days in front of the computer screen where in order to make our schedule, she had to go and, and remember like sometimes like 15 pages of dialogue and all, do all her eye lines on the screen um, all without being able to see what, what the final product would be. Um, it's almost like acting in front of a green screen, except I think one of them said at some point harder. Um, also, just working with actors like Storm and with, you know, Nia Long and Joaquin Dalmita, the, the vote of confidence in the movie that that gives um, is really awesome and just inspires everybody. Yeah, I, I so I think when when we first met Storm, uh, well, when we first uh, when Storm first came to to rehearsal, uh, we ran through a scene and I remember it was an emotional scene and I just remember thinking, wow, this girl, I think she was 17 or 18 at the time. She was, wasn't in college yet. Um, and she uh, had such an incredible um, access to her emotions. Um, just turned it on really immediately. That was the first thing that stuck out to me. And, and that was something that continued on set. She um, seems to have a great command uh, over her emotions and, and be able to, um, really tap into something, whatever it is. Um, and, and like Will said, to have as many great actors that, that we knew, like, like Amy Landecker, Joachim, and of course, um, of course, Nia, it was rarely do first time directors get that sort of cast. Um, and to have, uh, you know, not just like a couple of good actors, but depth, like real depth. Ken Leung is an incredible actor. Um, yeah. It was such a joy to watch them work. Um, and it also brought all the characters to life um, off the page. I mean, it, it in some ways, great casting, make, it, great casting really makes the writing better. And it definitely uh, does a lot of your job as a director if you cast well. So we're really lucky.